We live in the most extraordinary time in the entire history of the world. We know, based on the geological record, that nothing like this has ever happened before on Earth. There's been great civilizations that have come and gone, but what we have now with our cars and our radios and our stereos and our computers and our calculators is unprecedented. And it's brought about unprecedented levels of challenges and opportunities. Because we can focus on anything at any time, I choose to focus on what are the opportunities. What is being created out of, for example, the environmental disasters that have occurred on the planet? What opportunities are being opened up by the nutritional disasters that have happened due to the proliferation of junk food and, and candy and all kinds of artificial ingredients? And what has emerged out of those kinds of questions and that type of focus is an absolutely extraordinary option, which is the option to now be able to have the greatest food ever in the history of the world. The food choices that are before us are completely diverse and varied. It goes from everything from chemicals all the way to the most extraordinary foods grown by the great medicine schools in Tibet ever. You know, this is how wide our choices can be. And any food that we eat can literally just take this much work. It's either going to be this and then we eat, or it's going to be this and then we eat. And this right here could be the most horrid chemical soup of all time, or it could be the most extraordinary superfood of all time, and it's the same amount of work to get it into our mouths. We, for whatever reason, decided we're gonna spray everything with every kind of pesticide, herbicide, larvicide, fungicide, suicide. We decided we're going to genetically modify things we don't know anything about. We decided for some reason that we were going to inject hormones into cows and then pasteurize that milk to death and then serve it to millions of people. We just decided we were going to go into this crazy world of the unknown and experiment on ourselves. But what's interesting is that experiment has led to an incredible discovery. And that is food does matter. The food that we eat creates the tissues of our body, creates the quality of the energy of our cells, and very deliberately affects the quality of our thoughts. If we are eating the best food ever, and if, if I can be allowed to list what that is, that would include things like raw chocolate nuts or cacao beans, the food that all chocolate is made out of in its natural state, not in a processed state, in its original state as a nut. Goji berries, spirulina, bee pollen, wild honey, blue-green algae, hemp seeds, aloe vera, fresh noni. When you have that food, you can no longer be thinking about the greed. You can no longer be in an in a environment where you can tolerate people lying. You become pure in thought, word, and deed. And that has been a truth that I've experienced personally. If we shift our food choices by doing the most simple discovery, really, ever in the whole history of diet, which is adding the good stuff in, no longer are we in a state of taking something away from somebody, but just adding the good stuff in, we can then shift literally our consciousness by food. That to me is just, you know, a monumental breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. It's a technological discovery because what it allows us to do is leverage our abilities, our time, our skills. A lot of the success principles that I'd learned and studied as a kid since the age of 14, and I really started studying success principles from that point on. I met Tony Robbins when I was 14 years old, did a 10-day program and got deeply into it, but a lot of it was unusable until I actually got control of my body by getting on the proper nutrition because I used to not feel well. I would be 20 years old and I'd be like, something's not working here. Something is not right. And the discovery was that, hey, it's the food. There's something 
in our food that's incomplete or is not making us feel well or is not allowing us to reach our highest potential. Any discussion going into the future of human potential, the success equation, personal development, self-help technology, spiritual transformation must now include a deep and in-depth discussion of the power of real food. Anybody who's watching this right now has at some level made a choice that they want to do something that is going to improve their lives, their families' lives, their kids' lives, and the life of the planet itself, and the life of, of, their, of all the plants and everything. If that is our choice, then our food choices must correlate with that because if you've ever flown in a plane and you look out the window of the plane and you see what's down there, you'll see it's all farms. The primary way that we're interacting with our planet is through agriculture. And if we change our food choices, we change agriculture. And all of a sudden we shift away from, for example, corn, wheat, soy diets over to quote unquote superfood diets and organic diets and raw food diets. And we shift the whole way that we literally interact with the planet. The number one thing we're doing on this planet is growing things. In spite of all the chemical controlled giant agricultural businesses, we're still growing stuff. We could grow genetically modified corn or we could grow the most extraordinary goji berries in the world. We could grow genetically modified soybeans or we could grow the most powerful aloe vera that's ever been seen in the history of the world. And that choice is 100% ours. The technique for transforming your diet as fast as possible has evolved. And it's evolved in a direction that is, it just, it keeps me going. Because it, it's like, I can see now how I can get my mom going where 10 years ago, she couldn't hear any of it. She would be like completely averse to anything. And now she's like, look, get me this stuff. Here's what it's come down to. We found that the quickest way in is through two techniques. One is fresh vegetable juice. Fresh organic vegetables put through a juice machine and then drank right on the spot. That can be something as simple as celery and carrot juice. It can be something as simple as just straight celery juice. It could just be cucumbers. You can literally just put cucumbers through a juice machine and make that work. This has an ability to bring life force energy to the tissues almost instantaneously within 15 minutes. And it's a technology that we've known about for probably about 80 to 100 years. It was very popularized by Dr. Norman Walker in the 1940s and 50s, brought to prominence by my friend Jay Cordich. And then now we're in an evolved stage where people know what juicers are. They know that they can do this kind of thing. The health food stores that they have in their local neighborhoods have juice machines. And now we've just got to get on it. We've just got to say, every day I do that, I have 12 ounces, 16 ounces of fresh vegetable juice. Step two is adding in superfoods. This is a language that everyone can speak. It's a subconscious kind of prejudice that we have, which is very important, and that is we'd rather get our vitamins and minerals from food versus supplements and chemicals. This has led people naturally to discover superfoods and discover that certain foods have an extraordinary quality of vitamins and minerals and all kinds of cofactors and enzymes and you know special chemicals that for example will cause us to um, live longer will cause our skin to be softer etc etc we've categorized these as superfoods and here's what they include in one class we'll start with the B products wild honey, wild bee pollen, royal jelly, things that are collected by the bees have this extraordinary quote unquote superfood quality. In Russia they did 150 years of research on longevity and they found that the people who lived the longest were beekeepers. In my experience I've found that the longest lived people that I personally know are beekeepers. So there's some interesting truth to it. In days of old, before there were superfoods all over the planet, 
the way you would do it was beet products. Now, fortunately, we've got other choices. What are those other choices? Well, we've got the algaes. People are like, God, algae? This is, I'm, I'm not gonna eat the algae growing in my pool. Um, this is not what we're talking about. Some algaes are edible. Just for example, like some tree saps are edible, some aren't. Maple sap is edible, but for example, pine sap is you know not gonna be edible because it's gonna glue your mouth together. If you can tune into just one or two of these kind of superfood algaes, sometimes you might be able to discover that you found something that works so great for you, you can't believe it. But you can't know till you try. What are they? Spirulina, blue-green algae from Klamath Lake, and chlorella. These are the top three in the algae world. The lifestyle and diet and nutrition program that I advocate is a raw, organic, plant-based type of a diet. And the work that I've done with Dr. Gabriel Cousins has led us to the conclusion that really it's about 80% raw, organic, plant-based foods in your diet is what you need to eat in order to really get the benefits of those great foods. And then that other 20% is like leeway. It gives you a chance to accommodate the raw foods in and still maintain some of your old diet habits and foods that you really like. It also allows you to accommodate different theories, Chinese medicine theories, and whatever it, you know that looks like for each individual, whatever they need to accommodate, we accommodate that in that 20%. And that creates a nice balanced approach. It's not overbearing. And then you don't progress to 80% instantaneously unless you're ready. You, you kind of gradually go there and it becomes more of a direction, not a diet. The way that we can add these things in most effectively is to be aware of what is being added in. And this is what we recommend. Add in fruits vegetables, nuts, seeds, seaweed, sprouts, wheatgrass, herbs, and superfoods. Those are what's on the table now. These are what we get to choose from, and that's our part of our new selection. Of course, we recommend everything be the highest quality possible, as organic as possible, as raw as possible, and then we go into a store and we have that little list. Okay, I've got to get a fruit, a vegetable, a nut, a seed, a seaweed, a sprout, wheatgrass, herbs, and superfoods. Pretty soon, that's a lot of stuff. You start eating that and there's only so much we can eat in a day and that gradually just starts crowding out everything else. And then the feeling that you get from it is something that doesn't lie you feel good and you, you want to have what feels good. That's human nature. And this way we can guide ourselves out of the dietary trap of this is good, that's bad, with ease, without pain and suffering.